how, as, as a message to people who are watching this and trying to work their way through, a lot of young people who are trying to navigate this increasingly perilous minefield of d divisive politics in today's day and age, how do they know, wh what are the heuristics they use? What are the signposts they use to, to understand, am I on the right path? Is, is what I'm being taught or is what I'm being attracted to politically motivated from a sense of what's actually best for the community that I'm nominally caring for? Well, that requires, you might say, well, that requires careful meditation and prayer. You know, if you wanted to be traditional about it, I would say you have to orient, you have to determine, this is a, a process of soul searching. What are you oriented towards? And the answer could easily be nothing. Well, this is why I produced the future authoring program. You, like, you got to be oriented towards something because otherwise you're disoriented. You just spin around in circles and then you suffer. And so do people around you. It's not a good solution. Orient yourself towards something. You have to figure out what it is. What will work for you? What goal would, would justify the suffering of your life? Start trying to piece that together. You're going to get better at it. But it's a personal process. And, and you should use your education to inform that. So you need a personal place to stand because otherwise you're going to be handed a place to stand on a plate. And it may be one that, that makes you a puppet of someone else's goals. So I would say, you know, I, 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 what, are the, what are the processes? Well, I think what I've recommended to people is clean up your room. That's a good start. Organize your local landscape. Schedule your time. Start taking control of yourself. See if you can stop saying things you know to be lies. That's not the same as telling the truth. You don't get to do that to begin with because you're not good enough at it to even attempt it in some sense. But everyone can stop saying things they know to be falsehoods. They can use their own damn definition of falsehood. Right, but in your definition, importantly, I think, in your definition, falsehood includes the higher level moral truth. Yes, it's living wrong. It's, it's... You can say something that is literally true, but of course, like you said earlier, it's a black truth in the sense that at a moral level, you're saying something to cause a social effect yes. that is actually okay. negative. Say, stop saying things that violate your conscience instead of stop saying things you know to be untrue because right. we run into the truth problem. But I would say stop. Here's another idea. Stop saying and doing things that make you feel weak. Just all you have to do is pay attention to that. Some things you do will make you feel disintegrated. It's a physiological sensation. Disintegrated and weak. It's something that Carl Rogers commented on. He, he thought about that as part of... Uh oh now I can't remember the word. It's something like integrity. Um, but that isn't the word he used. But some things... Some things improve your integrity and some things disintegrate you. Now, the things that disintegrate you, you often do to impress other people or because you're taking a shortcut, or you're escaping what you know to be your moral obligation. And your moral obligation stems naturally from your aims. Like once, once you have aims, you have moral obligations. They come together, because the moral obligation is what you need to do in order to obtain the aim. So, and if you don't have an aim, well then you're aimless, so that's not a solution. So along with the aims come the moral obligations. Then when you violate the moral obligations, you'll have a sense of that violation. It's like, well, you have to stop doing that. Or, or that's something you could do. You don't have to. You don't have to do any of this. But I would say that's where, where people should start. You start small. It's not small. You think it's small. It's not small. I had a girl come up to me last night at the end of my talk, and this happens all the time. She said, I started cleaning up my room last year, and it completely changed my life. She said, your room is an externalization of your mind. And that's right. That's exactly true. To the degree that you're in your room, the room is you. Now, that isn't how people think, but that's okay. They, it doesn't matter if they think that way. That's how it is. So, straighten up what you can straighten up and quit saying things that make you feel weak. And then, then you'll know what to do next.